What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be checking out a whole bunch of new stuff and some restock stuff at uh, DLT Trading. If you guys have not checked out DLT Trading in a bit, definitely check them out. If you've not checked them out at all, you definitely need to add them to your retailer rotation because they consistently add some of the best stuff in the knife world. I'm gonna be going over restocked items, uh, some stuff that's gonna be dropping, uh, and some stuff that is brand new. Obviously, you can um, check this stuff out for yourself if you don't wanna to listen to me talk, that's perfectly fine. I'll link these pages right down below in the description of this video so that you can do it for yourself. But if you wanna hear my commentary, uh, or whatever you call it, I'm gonna sit here and talk about this stuff. I actually have only seen the first page or so. It's been a little over a month since I've done this, so there's definitely some stuff to look at. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Uh, something that I constantly say is one of the best things about DLT, something that other retailers should definitely be doing, is adding a restock page. I constantly come back to this page, and I mean a couple of times a day, and check to see what has been restocked. In the case of the black G10 pair of three, boy, it's expensive now, but it's there. And this page always, almost always has something. I'm like, man, if people knew this was here, then they, this is where, if you guys wonder, like, where do you find the stuff that you put on your community tab? A lot of times it's right here, right? I do this with various retailers, but sometimes you just find things you didn't know were back, right? I'm just gonna quickly scroll through it here real quick. Sage 5 Lightweight is back, S110V, Manix 2 is back, the all black full size manual Adamus is back, the S30V standard Griptilian is there. I think this guy's been there for a bit. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff in here, right? And every now and then you find that thing that you were looking for for a long time and then you forgot about it and you're like, oh, that's never gonna be back in stock. So you just stop looking for it. This page is always worth checking out. So briefly, wanted to cover that here real quick. Let's go to uh, new. I think that's probably a good idea. A couple of things that I notified people about. Um, a, is that a Bark River uh, LT3 V? Okay, apparently that's coming yeah, right there. Now, uh, this was not literally, <laughs> I don't think this was here the last time I looked at the page, right? Um, they did do a Tanto one. Oh, they did. They didn't know that. I just bought this knife. Let me tell you. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. <laughs> if you use this link, I think, it's, I think it's very apparent, right? But I throw this out here just to let people know that I'm aware. I'm not trying to pretend, right? I'm obviously a DLT trading uh, affiliate, right? I have affiliate programs with many retailers because I want people to have choices and I wanna make sure that I'm pointing out things that I actually like or that I know other people actually like, right? I bought this for this price, not here. I, bought, I actually bought it at a different retailer. <laughs> If you use this DLT link and you come here and you buy this, I'm going to make a commission. That's how that works, right? As somebody who is that, right, and somebody who actually bought this knife and paid full price at a totally different retailer, um, I think this is overpriced by about 100 bucks. But it is freaking cool, right? So uh, hopefully this is still here by tomorrow morning because I know there are people looking for this. Not everybody's going to be beating down doors to pay 600 bucks for this thing, right? Uh, that's the Annex. Uh, in, and, you know, part of the reason, if you're like, that can't be what, it's an integral, right? So right there, you got to add a couple of hundred bucks over, you know, a regular titanium frame lock made the same way. Um, but I think this should have been about 500, you know, for the DLC. I don't know where they came up with another 150 on this thing. Um, it is very cool though. And it's here, right? Whole bunch of new Kershaw's. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I have this in a box. It's waiting for me to open right now, but I'm not sure. That's the new launch from uh, Kershaw. A whole bunch of stuff. The heist, uh, I have this, have unboxed it for $57.99. Let me tell you, this is a nice, nice budget knife, right? Kershaw has stepped it up uh, in there. This is inexpensive territory for Kershaw. This is a Chinese Kershaw. Uh, and it's D2, but Kershaw has definitely stepped it up with some of these models, and the one that I unboxed I thought was really great. Um, so there you go. Moving on here, we got some cheese, we got some LT rights I don't know anything about. There's still a ton of vehement mongrels. I was, for the longest time, saying vehement, which was apparently a word that I had never heard before. I did, I, and I was like, it's not a common word, and people in the comments were like, yeah, it, it actually is a fairly common word, and I realized, uh, well, I guess I'm the... Um, I got, uh, I got ratioed there. Um, but 
<laughs> the vehement mongrel in S45VN. I have handled this knife. It's well made. I, I feel like the blade height to handle height ratio is a little bit odd. These are made by Medford, but the vehement, as far as I know, I, I think that is actually the case. Uh, that they are manufactured by Medford. If I'm wrong about that, please somebody tell me. But that's, I mean, these are fully USA made knives, right? So people looking at those prices and coming unglued, these are truly, completely and totally in-house, which is why they're so expensive. A bunch of new Mar uh, Medford Marauder H-frames. Those are the full-size one. They're just not the same thickness as the original, right? The, the quarter-inch ones. So these have a little bit better cutting geometries. Medford Praetorian T's and S45VN, which I think is probably uh, one of the better steels that you can get for those. Um, the Luft Concepts Avant in M390 and Zirconium was there for a bit, apparently. I... I would imagine maybe more of those will be coming. I don't know. These are all coming soon. Um, and uh, so these are all very, very interesting. And I would imagine, you know, obviously DLT trading is not the only um, company that's going to get these. Um, but this is the that you can sign up for email, email notifications if you want to. This is the new uh, Military 2. Um, which has the compression lock. And uh, just to, you know, take the same stance that everybody else took. Yeah, they should have done this uh, 10 years ago or however long ago, right? It's going to be really expensive. It says out of stock, but it also says in gianter letters, coming soon, which means it's going to come soon, right? All you can do at the moment is just hit the notify me when in stock button, right? Now, that's not the one that I think people are going to focus in on. The 15V Spyderco PM2 and the Shaman are the big ones here. Boy, oh boy, is that freaking expensive. 15V is uh, extremely, extremely, extremely uh, edge retention oriented. Um, we're talking about, I had a conversation with um, some people in a live stream because I did not know this. 15V is named 15V because of its 14.5 to 14.9% vanadium. Uh, in the composition. And what that equates to when properly heat treated is edge retention that is so ridiculously off the charts, uh, off the charts, it actually almost competes with the legendary um, Rex 121. I think Rex 121 is still potentially higher, but we're talking S 125 V levels of edge retention, or to quote some of the people in my live stream, potentially slightly higher. I do not know that at for a fact. Uh, this is just um, information that I've read that corresponds with what people are saying. And that's the reason that the hype is so insane on this thing. The price is obviously way up there. Um, but this is one of those things, right, where um, there's going to be a lot of this and that and people on one end of the fence or the other. You know, we got we're going to have people upset with the price and, you know, saying that it's all hype and this and that and other people, so, you know, really want to go out it's going to sell out either way it's just what's going to happen right whether i point this out or not right i could not say anything about this knife and it's going to sell out so the whole purpose of this is here it is it exists if you want it you will probably have to be quick when is it going to drop i have absolutely no idea uh, i've been checking back on dlt's instagram to see if they're going to hint at it I don't know. Um, it's a sprint run through Spyderco. It's not a DLT exclusive. So they may not be able to say like, hey, we're going to, hey, we're going to, you know, they may not be able to do that. It might just be like, there it is. Go get it. Right. So it's one of those things where if you weren't aware of it, now you're aware of it. And if you want to have a slight edge, then you can, that's a terrible knife pun. Then you want, you hit the, uh, the, the notify me one in stock, which is not completely and totally reliable, by the way, uh, with, with almost any retailer. I didn't know that this was a thing until I saw it uh, here on this first page. This is the Spyderco stock Bowie. It is a little Y. 8CR 13 MOV, fixed blade, 70 bucks. Where is this made? Nah. If you like it, that's fine. I'm not really into that one. I'm tired of seeing 8CR 13 MOV. I think that's... It's 2023. That's just there's a there's a bunch of steels that should just be permanently phased out, and I it's it's becoming more and more apparent to me that a lot of these companies just have an enormous stockpile of this steel, and because it was you know cheap and it was more acceptable uh, years back, and it just they just couldn't make enough knives in it, right? 
Tons of Bradford Guardian 3s and Magna Cut. Great steal. This was an intriguing fixed blade to me. The Spartan Moros. And I think, is that how you pronounce it? Really expensive, but this is this fully USA made. Not that I, you know, not that that price makes a whole lot of sense to me. But I do like that FDE coating, and I do like um, Spartan's quality. 10-inch fixed blade, 5.25-inch blade, 190 thousandths of S45VN and made fully in the United States. If you're a fixed blade person, that's a cool one. I Again, I, the price seems a bit high, but eh, what are you going to do? All right, we got some Heretic Colossus. I am very interested in the Heretic Colossus. I have been uh, tempted to uh, buy this knife for myself many times, um, but I don't, it just doesn't seem all that colossal, you know? So, eh. Les George ESV Flipper, is that actually there or is it coming soon? I feel like that one's coming. Maybe it is there. It's there, okay. Uh, it's in Magna Cut, by the way. Uh, it's Les George, meaning everything's made in the United States. If you're not familiar with Les George knives, they are made uh, at the, the same quality levels as a Hinder XM18. This is the smaller, uh, the smaller version of the VECP. Uh, we have um, XM18, I'm sorry, 3-inch XM18 textured micarta scales or smooth micarta scales. Some super strange sort of splatter paint themed fixed blades from, okay. Buck Deploy, the $220 automatic buck. Hmm, let's take a look here. Let's see. Eight and a quarter inches, so... It's a full-size knife. Not a bad-looking knife. Um, CPM s 35 en and it's made in the United States. Okay, well, how'd they do on the bevels? Ooh, the stock photo is a little bit goofy. Can I zoom in on that? Yeah, this right here, a little goofy. It's a little, little bit of a, a goofball there. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, uh, you know, I, I know Buck can make some quality tools, but like, you know, sometimes like bevels and things like that, we got other companies that are um, doing those bevels and things correctly. So it'd be nice to see if we're going to pay that much money, you know. So I was, I was harping on um, uh, Guardian Tactical on the Recon 35 that I got, you know, and my Recon 40 is the same way, you know, these are 200 and... $75 to $375 OTFs. So, you know, I'd like to see, I'd like to see some more consistent edge bevels. Um, there's still a three quarter AR in S45 VN hanging out. That's a good one. Uh, the S35 VN 80 20.5s in carbon fiber and G10 are still hanging about. Um, I don't know anything about the Fellholter. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know how anything about their pins, but they look kind of cool. Terrain 365 Otter. We've got some Reef Rife F4 Bushcraft knives. Eh, it's okay. We have. I talked about this the last time. The Large Sinkovich and S35VN. I'm kind of. Um, it's kind of interesting to me that that's still there. Another one that's interesting to me that is still hanging out is the Yojimbo 2 in purple G10 and crew wear. Now a ton of people bought these, and I'll tell you how I know. Um, it's because I have an affiliate link through DLT. So I don't see exactly what people buy, but I can, you know, usually guess based on what drops on certain days. And the day that this dropped, there were about 65 people who bought this. So that means that DLT ordered a ton of them, which is great, right? The only people who are going to be bummed out that this is still in stock are people who bought it with the intention to flip it, which is something that I kind of frown upon, right? But if you want this knife, if you're interested in this because it is a little bit different and it's cool and purple and black and it's got crew wear, right? Maybe you're going to use it. Maybe you just want it in your collection. It's still here. So thank you, DLT, for ordering enough so that people could actually get their hands on them, right? Um, these retailers are not concerned with the, the secondary market flipping that so many people are obsessed with. Ultratech Warhound in bronze. That's kind of neat. Let's keep going here. A couple more pages. Uh, more Praetorian Tees, Praetorian Tees, Praetorian Genesis. There's always an absolute crap load of Medfords here. There's also a lot of Protex. BR1 bolster release. That's actually pretty cool. Is that the Whiskers? I like that. That's a cool knife. 
That's the, this is a bolster release automatic knife. So it's like a hidden, if you go back and watch me unbox it, this for the first time, you see right there, the seam on the bolster, you just slide the bolster one way and it deploys, which is fun, right? It's cool. It's also, you know, well-shaped blade is practical too. 7.25 inches overall, 154 CM. Uh, I really wish that even though it's not really that much different, I really wish they would just do CPM 154 on all those. Runt fives, textured, that's cool. A whole bunch more Heretic Colossus in various finishes and colors. Uh, the Cold Steel Recon Tanto I'm kind of interested in because it's $46.99. Um, what are they making this out of? Is the SK stuff? Let's see. SK5, yeah. Manufactured in Taiwan. Ah, that's a quality. That's a quality $47 fixed blade, right? Made well. That'll satisfy your inner couch ninja. And at the same time, if you really plan to use it, well, by God, it'll stand up to it, right? Cold Steel Recon 1. Those are there. I'm going to guess. What's the air light? Are those in, are these in S35VN? Surely not at 72 bucks. Aus 10A. Eh, that's okay. I feel like the recons at 139 are in S35. Um, yes, those are in S35VN. So that's cool. These are cool, like over the top, you know, like it makes, I, I think those would make a great, like if you're legitimately spending a lot of time outdoors and like camping for multiple nights, or I think that's a good pocket knife for that, right? More Marauder H frames in S35VN. It's hard to justify those when you got S45VN, which is only incrementally different, but if you're going to pay that much, you might as well get the newest stuff. Am I right? That's how we all think anyway. Case, eh, Tour, eh, uh, eh, Cold Steel Leatherneck Bowie. Eh. Uh, there's still one of these Silcom Bravos sitting there. Tons and tons and tons and tons of Microtex. I think that's pretty much like everywhere right now. I think that's just the case. Let's move on here to page six. And if I start recognizing things from a past video, um, then I'll move on to the next category. Leatherman lanyard ring, Leatherman pocket clip. We've got case knives. We've got the Brian Brown Raptor V2, which is a DLT trading exclusive. If you didn't know this was here, it is. And this is a good looking version of it. Bronze with the carbon fiber inlay. Can we get a zoom up? Can we get a zoom up? There we go. Let's zoom in as much as we can. Can I zoom in further? Are you gonna let me? No, okay. Well, here you go. This is what it looks like. Uh, 375 bucks, M390, titanium, and what does the other side of it look like? We do have a backspacer, and we do have a milled clip, so that's nice. Not a, not a bad way to spend 375 bucks. There, there's uh, a lot of competition in that price range, and you can certainly, you know, find some some really really good knives for less. Lots of Olamic cutlery whippersnapper bolster locks. I always try to point this out. Um, these are the ones with the better action. These are the, this has the best action of any, uh, Olamic cutlery knife that I have seen in years. And if I were to buy an Olamic right now, that is probably the one that I would pick up. So I wish I could say that I enjoyed the attention to detail. I finally got to handle some of these and, um, now I'm not saying that they're all like this, but the truth is, is that the two that I handled were fairly new and they both had a little bit of lock rock. So I, I maybe maybe they were just two goofballs. I don't know. I'll talk more about that when I actually do the reviews. I feel like some of this stuff I've seen. So you know what I want to do is I want to go to exclusives real quick so you can see all of the exclusives that are currently available. I did not know that the RMJ Peregrine in Nitro V, that's a lot. Yeah, that Nitro V. You see that in budget knives, you see it in custom knives as well. Um, obviously the Yojimbo 2, uh, they did Riot Exos. I can almost guarantee that you will continue to see DLT trading exclusive Riot Exos. Um, obviously hinderer stuff. The last couple of hinderer drops, anybody who is involved with those, they don't go in 30 seconds anymore. They generally hang out for a bit. So if you've given up on getting yourself a hinderer, don't. The best place in my experience to snag a hinder is DLT trading because they have such massive quantities of them when they do a drop. It doesn't matter if it's just a regular drop, if it's a DLT drop, 
when they get these things, they get enough that they last for a little bit longer. The last drop, and you know, these were actual XM18s. They lasted 45 minutes to an hour on the site before they went down. They actually have more. The AR, the three-quarter AR in, um, that's a tumbled titanium and DLC or PVD. Uh, they've still got that. They've got a bronze one. They've got a blue one, bronze and black. The 20 CV pair of three is still there. <laughs> that's cool. I like having these pages that sort this stuff out because these exclusives are generally the things that people go for. S90V, uh, mini griptilian and uh, Intanto and... Uh, drop point still there. Um, what else here is interesting? Yeah, they finally sold. Oh, that's that's the MG. Um, those are the full size ones. <laughs> the slims. What was the exclusiveness with this? 8020s S40. Oh, the S45 VN. Wow! Congratulations to whoever got this bad boy. Holy moly! I would love to have one of those. A full-size slim. The true USA one. The tan and DLC uh, Spyderco PM2 is still here. 175 Not a bad price for that one. Absolutely not. If you need a WTG JXV Black G10 Stonewashed Machete Sword, that is there. Um, we'll do one more page of this and then I want to do their drops page real quick as well. There's a, there's still a titanium warthog scale for the eclipse. Two, three, four, five. Look at this. That's a nice one. Smooth warthog scale, working finish. If you're looking to spice up your eclipse with something interesting and unique, uh, DLT has, they got a specific sign up for alerts thing for hinder stuff. They do have those. The Mortal Kombat themed Heretic Manticore X is still there for $850. My goodness. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go to drops. DLT has, man, their pages are sorted out. I love this. So there's two recent drops, obviously the Yojimbo, upcoming Bark River Aurora 2 and 3B and EXT2 LT in 3B. I have no experience with those knives. That is a good looking fixed blade. And then we have the, um, the Mongrel, I think. And that's, I guess that's it for now. Um, but uh, this is a page that's always worth checking out because you get a little bit of an idea of when things. I know you guys, a lot of you are like, nah, I'm not gonna check. I'll just wait and check your community tab. That's a good way to keep updated because my community tab, I'll make sure and highlight the stuff I think is the most interesting and not just through DLT. I do them a lot, but it, the reason I do them a lot is because they drop so much cool stuff all the time, right? But I'll highlight anything else that I think is interesting. I think that's gonna be pretty much it today. A little bit shorter than what we normally do, but uh, still lots of really, really interesting stuff here. Like I said, you can check all of these individual pages out by checking uh, the links in the description of this video. Uh, hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.